Where are those plastic children? Where are they? He's put my laptop on the floor. Goodness me! Put it back where it's supposed to go. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, I got a message here. Someone who wants me to read a book for World Book Day. Hmm, let's see what I can find. Hmm, Matilda, that wretched little child. Hmm, let's have a look and see what I can find in this book. If there's anything you little maggots would like. Ah, the trunch ball. She sounds absolutely beautiful. Okay, are you ready? Are you sitting still? Sit still and listen to the story. In the interval, Miss Honey left the classroom and headed straight for the headmistress's study. She felt wildly excited. She had just met a small girl who possessed, or so it seemed to her, quite extraordinary qualities of brilliance. There had not been time yet to find out exactly how brilliant this child was, but Miss Honey had learnt enough to realise that something had to be done about it as soon as possible. It would be ridiculous to leave a child like that stuck in the bottom form. It sounds like she's been lazy. Normally, Miss Honey was terrified of the headmistress and kept well away from her. But at this moment, she felt ready to take on anybody. She knocked on the door of the dreaded study. Enter! Boomed the deep and dangerous voice of Miss Trunchbull. Miss Honey went in. Now, most teachers are chosen because they possess a number of fine qualities. They understand children have the best they have the children's best interest at heart. They are sympathetic. They are fair and they are fairly interested in education. Miss Trunchbull possessed none of these qualities and how she ever got to her present job was a mystery. She was above all a most formidable female. She had once been a famous athlete and even now the muscles were still clearly evident. You could see them in the bull neck, in the big shoulders, in the thick arms, and in the sinewy wrists, and in the powerful legs. Looking at her, you got the feeling that there was someone who could bend iron bars and tell her telephone directories in half. Do you think I sound like a, a nice person? Hmm, what do you think? This roll doll making me sound a horrible person. Her face, I'm afraid, was neither a thing of beauty or of joy. She had an obstinate chin, a cruel mouth and small arrogant eyes. And as for her clothes, my clothes are fine. They were, to say the least, extremely odd. She had on a brown cotton smock which was pinched in around the waist with a wide leather belt. The belt was fastened in front with an enormous silver buckle. The massive thigh highs which emerged from out of the smock were encased in a pair of extraordinary breeches, bottle green in colour and made of coarse twill. These breeches reached just below the knees and from there on down she sported green stockings with turn up tops which displayed her calf muscles to perfection. On her feet, she wore flat-heeled brown brogues with leather flaps. She looked in so short, more like a rather eccentric and bloodthirsty follower of the staghounds than the headmistress of a nice school for children. How do you feel if your head mistress or head teacher was like the lovely Miss Trunchbull? Would you feel happy about that or sad? When Miss Honey entered the study, Miss Trunchbull was standing beside her huge desk with a look of scowling impatience on her face. Yes, Miss Honey? Yes, yeah, she said. What is it you want? You're looking very flushed and flustered this morning. What's the matter with you? Have those little stinkers been flicking spitballs at you? No, headmistress. Nothing like that. 
Well, what is it then? Get on with it! I'm a busy... Whoa. I'm a busy woman! As she spoke, she reached out and poured herself a glass of water from a jug that was always on her desk. There was a little girl in my class called Matilda Wormwood. Ugh, wretched! Miss Honey began. That's the daughter of the man who owns Wormwood Motors in the village! Miss Trunchbull barked. She hardly ever spoke in a normal voice. She either barked or shouted. An excellent person, Wormwood, she went on. I was only there yesterday. He sold me a car almost new. Only done 10,000 miles. Previous owner was an old lady who took it out once a year at the most. A terrific bargain. Yes, I like Wormwood. A real pillar of our society. What does that mean? A pillar of society? Hmm, who else could be a pillar of society? It means someone that's really good and really beneficial to society. He told me the teacher, sorry, he told me the daughter was a bad lot though. He said to watch her and said, if anything bad, bad ever happened in the school, it was certain to be his wretched daughter who did it. I haven't met the little brat yet, but she'll know about it when I do. Her father says she's a real wart. Oh no, headmistress, that can't be right, Miss Honey cried. Oh yes, Miss Honey, it darn well is right. In fact, now I come to think of it, I'll bet it was she who put that stink bomb under my desk here first thing in the morning. The place stunk like a sewer. Of course it was her. I shall have her for that. You'll see if I don't. What she looked like, nasty little worm, I'll be bound. I'll have discovered, Miss Honey, during my long career as a teacher, that as a bad girl is far more dangerous creature than a bad boy. Have a look at this picture of me and look how beautiful I am. Can you think of any descriptive words that have not been used already to describe how beautiful I look? What's more, they're much harder to squash. Squashing a bad girl is like trying to squash a blue bottle. You bang down on the darn thing and it it's in there. Nasty little things little girls are. Glad I never was one. Oh, but you must have been a little girl once, said Mistress. Surely you were. Not for long, anyway. Miss Trunchbull barked, grinning. I became a woman very quickly. She's completely off her rocker, Miss Honey told herself. She's balmy as a bedbug. Miss Honey stood resolutely before the headmistress. For once, she was not going to be browbeaten. I must tell you, headmistress, she said that you are completely mistaken about Matilda putting a stink bomb under your desk. I am never mistaken, Miss Honey. But headmistress, the child only arrived in school this morning and came straight to class. Don't argue with me, for heaven's sake, woman. This little brute Matilda, or whatever her name is, has stink bombed my study. There's no doubt about it. Thank you for suggesting it. But I didn't suggest it, headmistress. Of course you did! Now, what is it you want, Miss Honey? Why are you wasting my time? I came to talk to you about Matilda, Headmistress. I have extraordinary things to report to you about the child. May I please tell you what happened just in class now? I suppose she set fire to your skirt and scorched your knickers, Miss Trunchbull snorted. No, no, Miss Honey cried out. Matilda is a genius! As the mention of this word, Miss Trunchbull face turned purple, and her whole body seemed to swell up like our bullfrogs. A genius! She shouted. What piffle! This you are talking, madame. You must be out of your mind. I have a father's word that this child is a gangster. Her father is wrong, head mistress. Don't be a twip, Miss Honey. You have met the little beast for only half an hour, and her father has known her all her life. Miss Honey was determined to have her say, and she began now to describe some of the amazing things Matilda had done with arithmetic. So she's learnt a few times tables by heart, has she? My dear woman, that doesn't make her a genius. It makes her a parrot. What do you think the author means there by it makes her a parrot? Hmm. Why does it make her a parrot? Have a think about that for a little bit. But, headmistress, she can read. So can I, snapped Miss Trunchbull. 
It is my opinion, Miss Honey said, that Matilda should be taken out of my form and placed immediately in the top form for, with the eleven-year-olds. Ha! <laughs> snorted Mr. Trunchbull. So you want to get rid of her now, do you? So you can't handle her now? So now you want to unload her onto the rest of the wretched Miss Plimpsel in the top form where she can cause even more chaos? No, no, cried Miss Honey. That is not the reason at all. Oh, yes it is, said Mr. Trunchbull. I can see right through your little plot, madam. And my answer is no. Matilda is to stay put. And it's up to you if she behaves herself or not. But headmistress, please, not another word, shouted Miss Trunchbull. And in any case, I have the rule in this school that all children remain in their own age groups regardless of ability. Great Scott, I'm not having a little five-year-old brigand sitting with the senior girls and boys in the top form. Who ever heard of such a nonsense and such a thing? Miss Honey stood there, helpless before this great red neck giant. There was a lot more she would like to have said, but she knew that it was useless. She said softly, Very well then, it's up to you, headmistress. You know I'm right, it's up to me! Miss Trunchbull bellowed. Don't forget, madam that we are dealing here with a little viper who put a stink bomb under my desk. She did not do that, headmistress. Of course she did it, Miss Trunchbull boomed, and I'll tell you what. I wish to heavens I still was allowed to use the birch and belt as I did in the good old days. I'd have roasted Matilda's bottom for, for her so she couldn't sit down for a month. Miss Honey turned and walked out of study, feeling depressed, but no means defeated. She told herself, I don't know what it will be, but I shall find a way to help her in the end. I don't think she will help her in the end, the wretched little girl. So that's one chapter from my favourite book, Matilda. If you enjoyed it, you'll find it in the school library. Pick it up and give it a read. Goodbye for now, you wretched little maggots.